Welcome back to another thrilling Manwa journey. The story begins where it did 10 years ago, with the gates opening to a world where demons emerged. We can witness various types of creatures related to the dungeons. Awakeners emerged among the people, becoming hunters who hunt monsters. In this world, there are numerous ranks and types of hunters that have been introduced. We are introduced to our hero, who is suddenly struck by something and collapses, becoming the target of bullies at school. Our hero is injured and brutally bullied by his own classmate, Kang Jihyun, who is known as an awakener. Two other classmates, who are led by their leader, possess unique abilities. Our hero's power is regeneration, which allows him to heal over time. Originally, it is classified as an S-class ability. However, using this power can be an excruciating experience because it is a rare ability that causes intense pain during the regeneration process. Despite enduring constant bullying, our hero continues to regenerate despite the pain. His life is filled with pain, marked by school violence that leaves no evidence behind, as the S-Class Awakeners, who are under special government supervision, are protected from consequences. Neither the teachers nor the police offer assistance. The only reason he is still alive is thanks to his mother, who owns a local small business and maintains a semblance of a normal life. Our hero's father passed away when he was just five years old, at which point he became a hunter. After graduating from a specialized awakened program in high school, he aspired to continue using his abilities to become a C-rank hunter after graduation. This way, he could help provide for his mother. He understood that the pay might be low, but he hoped to secure a better living situation for them both. His mother's hands, covered in calluses, were a stark reminder of the sacrifices she had made. It happened to be her birthday at that time. However, as with all moments of happiness, they eventually come to an end. He had thought he would lead a happy life as a hunter, but tragedy struck when his mother became a vegetable patient. The government claimed it was an accident. He recalled the day when his mother was at their business. It was then that he was confronted and bullied by someone displaying their awakena powers, demonstrating their diamond abilities. His mother, uncomfortable with the situation, accidentally dropped one of the bully's phones, enraging him. In a fit of anger, the bully used his powers to harm our hero's mother, piercing her spine. Our hero was consumed by a mixture of rage, confusion, and fury, to the point where he cried blood and could barely handle the stress. He knew he couldn't escape this situation because he had experienced such absolute change before. Overwhelmed by anger and stress, he ground his teeth until they broke and fell out. He screamed in pain while tearing at his own skin. Nearby, there was a cake meant for his mother, a painful reminder of the happiness they were denied. In the mountains the next day, three bullies were discussing their lives, including what might happen if one of them were to die. The one with blue hair reassured the others not to worry because he was an awakener, even though he hadn't confirmed if he was the number one hunter. Suddenly, our hero appeared, leaving everyone surprised by his sudden arrival. He questioned them about their actions, and again, they were taken aback by his words. Our hero shouted at them, demanding to know why they had harmed his own mother. The one with blue hair was taken aback, wearing a mocking smile as he revealed that it was indeed our hero's mother they had harmed. They proceeded to taunt our hero about his mother, intensifying his anger. Determined, our hero lunged towards them to attack, but the bully used his power to pierce our hero with a diamond-tipped stick, stopping him in his tracks. However, our hero refused to give up. He strained to pull the long diamond stick from his chest, causing blood to spill everywhere. The pain was excruciating, but our hero pressed on. The bully was surprised and impressed by our hero's ability to regenerate, but then the blue-haired bully summoned multiple icicle diamonds, raining them down and piercing every inch of our hero's body. Despite the agony, our hero remained alive. He continued to regenerate and pushed forward, completely disregarding the pain, fueled by his fury over the situation and what had happened to his mother. His face twisted with anger and he was determined to exact revenge. The leader bully asked the other bully to electrify our hero. She then summoned a lightning bolt towards at him causing so much in pain that he kneeled down and dropped to his knees. He finally collapsed due to the electric shock and everyone tried to make a quick exit. However, he grabbed onto the bully's legs, consumed by anger. The bully covered his entire arm in diamond and proceeded to deliver a punishing blow to our hero's head, causing him intense pain. The bully continued to relentlessly pummel our hero, attempting to end his life with each punch. However, every time he struck our hero, our hero regenerated. Finally, the bully grabbed our hero's neck and prepared to deliver his most powerful punch directly into his mouth. But our hero refused to give up and bit down on the bully's hand, never relenting. 
the bully couldn't believe how determined our hero was, and it made him sick to witness our hero's resilience. He then ordered his friend, named Sandman, to dig a hole and bury our hero alive. Our hero continued to taunt the bully, but the bully silenced him. He proceeded to create a diamond spike amidst the dirt, and our hero understood the gruesome fate that awaited him. Our hero screamed that he would eventually exact his revenge. As he was buried alive beneath the diamond-studded earth, the bully peered down and challenged our hero to kill him if he could emerge from his cocoon. Our hero is now stuck inside a giant cocoon of diamond, trying to escape. He can't believe it and doesn't know what to do next. He screams and punches the diamond in his struggle to escape. He feels hopeless and doesn't know what to do next, knowing that it's diamond. Suddenly, he loses all the oxygen and suffers from a lack of oxygen, which he knows is painful, and he loses consciousness. However, due to his regenerative abilities, he cannot die. Consciousness returns, but the ability to regenerate also comes with overwhelming pain that no human can handle. He then remembers his mom, suffering from the pain of regeneration and asphyxiation, realizing that his body won't allow him to die. He feels powerless to the bones, but over time, he gets used to the pain. In his state, he only thinks of his mother and that he's alive, determined to get out no matter what. Somehow, no matter how long it takes, he doesn't care, he's going to get out and continues to repeatedly punch the diamond. Five years have passed, and the three bullies are now the most popular S-class hunters in Korea, with broadcasts all over the country. They are being interviewed on a popular live show. The reporter asks about their regular volunteer work today. They answer that since they were young, they have always felt rewarded by helping friends in need, and that's what they continue to follow. Asked another question until five years ago when a runaway asked if they hurt people. The leader of the bullies shed crocodile tears and told them about our hero's mother. They didn't ask if they had apologized to their friend, and he answered that he hadn't been able to contact him since that day. But suddenly, a shout was heard, telling him to apologize. The huge door suddenly flew open and was kicked by a strong force. The blue-haired bully blocked it with his diamond ability and was surprised by what was going on. Everyone was thrown back, thinking a demon had appeared. The demon, who was actually our hero, walked towards them but then rushed at them with incredible speed. He was about to punch the bully in the face. Our hero recalled that he had gotten used to the pain. He didn't know how much time had passed, whether it was months or years, but the lion wasn't even scratched. What changed was his ability, it was different from the others. He looked at his hand and noticed something. Repeated body transformation triggered excess regeneration, increasing his strength and giving him an exoskeleton-like diamond. His whole body broke, and he was in excruciating pain, with blood splattering and flesh torn, even broken bones. He adapted, debating the pain and transformed into a more powerful, non-human form. Then, there was a powerful blow to the bully's face, breaking his entire face. He flew into the wall due to the force of the punch. The two friends couldn't even comprehend how fast it was, and they saw a demon from hell. Both stood up nervously, and our hero finally told them that he had emerged, with a terrifying look on his face. The leader quickly regained consciousness and recovered, although he was confused and didn't see it coming. The red-haired bully used his thunderbolt but it was ineffective, as ground type is always ineffective against electric type. Our hero gritted his teeth, used a quick attack and slashed at the same time. It was very effective, and the bully's head flew off. Both of them saw their friend's head blast away, but our hero didn't care as he stood there menacingly. Suddenly, the geodude-looking guy used rock throw on our hero, covering him with dirt, but this didn't bother him at all, as he knew what to do next. He breaks free and uses a quick attack, grabbing the Geodude guy by the jaw and ripping it apart. Finally, our hero stabs Geobro in the head, killing him instantly. However, the leader coats his hand with diamond and prepares to attack our hero from behind, knocking him to the ground. The leader notices that his diamond-coated hand is cracked and can't believe how tough our hero is. Panicking, he uses his last resort, summoning hundreds of diamond icicles and launching them at our hero. The leader smirks, thinking it's all over. To his surprise, our hero regenerates and he can't believe what's happening. He's terrified. Our hero then covers his entire body with diamond, going all out against his opponent. He beats up our hero, trying to kill him, focusing only on his head and beating him mercilessly. With a final strike, like he did in the past by putting his whole fist in our hero's mouth. But this time, our hero manages to bite his fist, cracking the diamonds. The leader is shocked and terrified, not knowing what to do next. Our hero gets up and pierces the leader in the chest using his claw. The leader panics, in excruciating pain and terrified. He uses his final ability, summoning a huge diamond spike from underneath, 
piercing our hero through the chest while still latching onto the leader's arm, completely ripping it apart. The leader cries and quickly runs away, but our hero escapes and throws a diamond icicle through the leader's chest. Our hero chases him, grabbing one of the leader's diamond icicles, while the leader begs him to stop. Our hero proceeds to torture the bully by stabbing multiple icicles into him as an act of revenge for what happened five years ago. After that, the leader asks who he is and why he's doing this. Our hero glares at him menacingly and rips apart a mask made out of his skull. The leader looks at him and remembers him well. It's our hero, Kang Jae-young, fulfilling his revenge. After revealing his face, he proceeds to beat up the leader first, using the exact moves and manner in which he was beaten five years ago. Finally, as a final act of revenge, he does the same thing, putting his fist in the leader's mouth and killing him instantly. Finally, he fulfills his dream of getting revenge. He looks around at his surroundings, seeing all the targets he wanted to see dead, but he feels empty after this satisfying revenge. He wonders what to do next. He managed to get revenge, but that won't change everything, especially his mother's vegetative state and the five years of hell he endured. He recalls visiting his mother, old and frail but surprisingly still alive after all those years. Our poor hero kneels down and cries as the rain pours on him, knowing that he can't turn back time. Time passes, and in a mountain, there's a portal to a dungeon. Inside, there are many dead monsters lying around. A group of adventurers is thanking the healer who's not new to this deep portal experience. The healer smiles and thanks them for their compliments. Unfortunately, four of the men have bad intentions and make her uncomfortable. The leader of their group suggests that nobody knows what happens inside the portal. He grabs the healer's wrist and assaults her, fondling her body. He tells her that it depends on the class of the portal, sometimes taking months to exit, and he will ask her for something they can take care of. The healer cries, but suddenly the leader's head drops, and everyone is surprised by who killed him. It's our hero who killed the leader. Was it because he was a threat, or was he trying to save the girl? Everyone attacks him with magic, like fire or curses. Lastly, a guy with a katana charges in for an attack. Luckily, our hero doesn't even feel any damage, as if he's immune to magic. The guy attacks, but his katana shatters against our hero's diamond exoskeleton body. One by one, our hero decapitates their heads, leaving one girl remaining. Our hero looks down at her, and even though the healer girl thanks him for saving her life, he surprisingly kills and decapitates the girl too, without any remorse. We go back to a moment from the past when he recalls something happening. A voice is heard, complimenting him and saying that he has already gotten his revenge. Our hero tells the voice to shut up, whoever he or she is. It's revealed to be a mysterious lady who tells him that she is the president of the Korea Hunter Association. She calls out his name, and our hero is left stunned. He's surprised by how she knows about him. She then tells him that they've been watching him since the incident five years ago. This makes our hero furious, and he quickly rushes toward her, ready to kill her. However, she tells him that she can help his mother. Our hero stops in his tracks when he hears this. He's surprised and intrigued by what he hears. The president then tells him that there is a way to help his mother regain her health, explaining that it's possible with the help of the one and only S-class healer in the world, who happens to be herself. Our hero then asks her how he can trust her. She replies that while he was encased in diamond for five years, his mother was still alive, questioning whether he thinks it's all a coincidence. He realizes this and has no choice but to trust her words, asking her what she needs. The president smiles and says that she needs a very strong hunter, someone with an extremely high power level, some of whom can even rival nuclear weapons in power. Thanks to these hunters, the magical monsters were nearly all subdued. But the portals didn't disappear, without the monsters, the portals were just empty space. So she waged a war to find these hunters. However, in Korea, they faced challenges due to the varied ages of the hunters, and there was even an invasion of Japanese hunters that she couldn't stop. But everything changed when our hero showed up. She tells him that if he fights the Japanese hunters like Korean hunters, it would lead to an all-out war. But if he hunts them inside the portals, like hunting monsters, there would be no problem at all. The president then begs him to help her, promising that she will keep her word and save his mother. And that's where it all began. He looks at his mother's picture and tells himself that he will become a magic monster for his mom's sake. Meanwhile, at the prime minister's residence in Japan, they are discussing the missing Japanese hunter. The Japanese prime minister informs one of his best hunters that the minister of defense mentioned high-class monsters inside the gate. The prime minister then asks if there is a strong hunter in Korea, to which they respond that there aren't. He becomes furious, demanding to know why their hunters can't enter Korean territory. They reveal that the Japanese prime minister's name is Yudo Ryuzaki. 
the top-ranked hunter apologizes to the Prime Minister, promising to rectify the situation. The Prime Minister asks how, and he replies that he will personally go there. It's revealed that the top-ranked Japanese hunter is named Kakaru Itasai. Kakaru Itasai instructs the secretary to prepare his sword immediately. The secretary, somewhat rudely, reminds him that the hunters who were sent there were elite and accompanied by the Ministry of Defense's hunter. In an arrogant tone, Kakaru asks the secretary if she thinks he looks weak like the others. The secretary quickly apologizes. The top-ranked hunter enters the portal and effortlessly dispatches some of the monsters, wondering why they were defeated so easily and what happened to the others. At the end of the dungeon, he finds our hero sitting amidst a pile of dead Japanese hunters. This discovery infuriates Kakaru. Kakaru Itasai upon learning the truth. This concludes part one of the series. What will happen to Kakaru Itasai? Will he manage to defeat the seemingly invincible hero? Will our hero succeed in saving his mother? Will the president of the Korean Hunter Association fulfill her promise? And will she heal our hero's mother as he requested? Tune in next time for the next part of this series. That is all. Thank you for joining me on this saucy manhwa journey. If you enjoyed the recap don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, stay saucy.